Hey guys, hope you're all well. Today we're going to be looking at Royal Bloods Out of the Black. Absolutely phenomenal song. I got to see these guys a few months ago and was completely blown away. I didn't realise two people could make so much noise. That's great. So, I'm going to take you through each part of the song. We're going to uh, break the drum bits apart. We're going to look at each section individually. I'll put a little uh, contents page down in the description just so you can skip the parts you want if you're only looking for certain bits of the song. So, without further ado, let's get on to the intro. Okay, so the intro's got a couple of ideas that they're using. The first of which is this choked hi-hat with a kick drum underneath. Played like this. Now the idea behind this is that you can open the hi-hat quickly and close it quickly. To get that choke. Underneath of which, if you're here I'm already putting it in, is a kick drum. In addition to this, we've got some quick sixteenths with the left hand. Now these might feel a little unusual to begin with because we're not often playing a lot with our left hand. But with a bit of practice you'll be able to get the speed up. So, the rhythm. One, two, three, and four, three, three, and four, three. One, two, three, and four, three, three, and four, three, and one. This is going to be repeated twice. So, in its entirety. One, So the more astute of you will realise that the second bar is exactly the same as the first until you get to beat four. And rather than going up four E, we've got four E and uh. Now this pattern and this idea continue into the main riff which comes in straight afterwards. Okay, coming out of the initial idea, we're going to develop this a little bit further and we're going to go right hand, rather than choking the hi-hat, we're going to go on to the right cymbal and we're going to play it straight eight. This is for the big sexy riff that comes in straight after. Now coming out of that first pattern, we've got those four sixteenth notes and we're going to hit a crash cymbal and we're going to start that right pattern off. Pattern for this big riff is exactly the same as before between the kick and the snare. So we've got We're going to repeat this twice. On the end, at the end of the second repeat, we've got a little sneaky bar of three eight in there, or six sixteenths, depending on how you want to count it. Now, all this is is an additional one, two, three, and there. that's all is adding on to it. So, coming out of the second repeat of the big riff, we've got. into the next section. If you're having a bit of trouble with the counting side of things, think of this little extra part as just a repeat of what we've had before at the end of the bar. So at the end of the bar previous we've got one, two, and a, and forty, and a, that, and forty, and a, exactly the same as one, two, three, and a. So we're just going to add another one on. One, And we're into the verse. Okay, coming into the verse, we've got uh, basically what is an applied flam tap rudiment. Now, for uh, to avoid any confusion, a flam, a right-handed flam, will start with the grace note on the left, so the strong note is on the right. Right-handed flam. These are lots of right-handed flam taps. Flam tap. I'm just going to apply them. the kit. Okay? So we're starting off crash and an additional kick. And then your first flam. One E and uh, flam tap. We're gonna continue this rudiment round while putting offbeat sixteenth notes on the kick drum. So just the hands first with those two kicks at the beginning. Again, a little bit slower. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. 
So the right hand is going to be staying predominantly on the floor tom, but coming across to the snare for the back beat on two and four. Your left hand is going between the rack, the floor, back to the rack, and the snare to get those grace notes for each flounce. Now, while grace notes are usually played quite quietly, quite quietly, while they're usually played quietly, when it comes to the toms, we're playing rock music, playing them a bit louder is only gonna benefit things. Just make sure that that left hand is still sneaking in just before the right comes down. Rather than at the same time. Okay, so adding the kick in, we're gonna have these offbeat 16ths underneath that pattern. So, So on E's and R's throughout the entire section. Okay. So we're going to play this round a few times. I don't know how many bars we've got. One, two, three, four, five. Well, five bars of this. And on the sixth bar, we've got a little crescendo feel coming up as well. So in its entirety. Sixth bar. Now, when you get to the sixth bar, you kind of got a choice with the crescendo build up. I prefer to start a crescendo with a kick drum and the two toms together, build up on just the toms, so that when I crash into the next section, that kick gives a, gives a bit more emphasis. What you can do on this is also build with your kick drum and play really depends what your preference is. I have a feeling that Ben Thatcher is doing all three together. He's an absolute powerhouse of a drummer. And it wouldn't surprise me if he was giving it full throttle to build that up on each section. My personal preference, I like to have that extra little bit to crash in with, so I hold it back for the majority of the build up. So mine will go From this point, we're into the chorus. The chorus has got this call and response idea. So the call is going to be eighth notes on the hi-hat, open, nice and washy, nice and big sound. And the response is going to be riding through the ride cymbal, or rather crashing through the ride cymbal, which means he's burying the stick into the edge, rather than playing on top. Now, the call on this, is, as I say, eighth notes on the hi-hat, nice and washy, and we've got a few offbeat sixteenths going in between your hi-hats as well as on the beat. So we've got one, and a two, and three, and a four, and a and. That's the call. This call happens every single time. This is a repeat each time. The response, however, changes every other bar. Excuse me. So, the call, one, and a two, and three, the response for the first one is going to be one and a two and three and a four and a. Again, one and a two and three and a four and a. Nice and simple. We go back to the initial call again. The second response is going to be one and a two and three and a. So a slightly more decorated version of the first one, we've got this independent snare coming in between the right symbol. So again, that's one and a two and three and a four and a. We're going to repeat that call and response theme twice. So each four bars is repeated again.
After the chorus, we've got a little tag before the second verse. We're going to start us off with the crash cymbals. And we're going to go back into our verse one idea with the flam taps around the kit. So we've got uh, th two bars. Got two bars of this idea. So you've got one bar and two beats. And then you've got a fill. Flam. We've got that choke symbol coming back at the end, but this time with a snare drum underneath it. So, those two bars in their entirety. And this takes us into the second verse. Brand new concept for the second verse. We've got 16th notes on the hi-hat, and we've got a bit of a groove going. It's a two bar phrase repeated, and a little cheeky open hi-hat on the last fourth bar. Now, at the very beginning of it, common technique with a lot of drummers, when you're hitting a crash cymbal and you're going into 16th, you may not go straight into 16th, i.e. starting on the one, E, and the. You can't, sometimes you want to start on the and, because it just makes it a whole lot easier to go from a crash cymbal to a hi-hat. So you go one, E, and the, two, Okay, so this is exactly what he does here at the beginning of the second verse. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so the kick pattern underneath. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E. This repeats twice, but on the second repeat, fourth bar right at the end, we're going to open the hi-hat up on the and of four. So that bar is going to go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and. Then into the second part of the verse, we're going to double up on the hi-hat, playing 30 second notes, keep everything else exactly the same. And we're also going to start opening up our hi-hat coming towards the end of it. This is going to build it into the next section, kind of a bridge before the chorus. So, coming out of the first half of the verse, where we've got the 16s. At the end of this bar, we're going to start opening the hi-hat. into the bridge. The bridge is a two bar section, it's just a little, uh, little bit of something extra before going back into another chorus. We've got this open hi-hat offbeat idea, it's going to sound like this. One and a two E and three E and a four and one E and a two and three E and a four E and a. Broken down, we've got two different ways of playing, sorry, two different ideas in the actual groove itself. The first, all singles on the kick. At least that's how I like to remember it. One and a two E and. So the kick, one and a two E and. One and a two E and. The second idea, we've got a double thrown in. Three E and a so that's three E and a four and. An important part about the offbeat hi-hat is that you're closing the hi-hat on the beat and opening it off. One and a two and three E and a four and. My foot is coming down on the one, two, three, four and opening on the ands of each of those beats. So the three sections before the fill comes in at the end, we've got those single notes on the kick drum, and then two sets of the double note version. This 
fill at the end is kind of a similar idea to the first verse where I prefer to put a kick drum at the beginning and then the top build so I can come in with a bit more authority on the drums, on the kick drum, sorry. But you can build all three together. Which will actually give the build a lot more power. This brings us into the second chorus. The second chorus is identical to the first chorus. So rather than go through it again, just go onto the description, click the link if you need to see it again, and learn it from there. After the second chorus, we're going into the intro again, but the, uh, the second half of the intro, so the part where we were riding through the ride cymbal with the eighth notes. Exactly the same idea again, so I'm not gonna go through it again, just have a look at the description and it guides you right back to it. After we've done this intro idea again, we're gonna go into a slight variation of the bridge we discussed earlier with all the open hi-hat offbeat notes. Now this one, where we had our two, we had our two variations, we had the single kick drum parts and we had the ones where there was a double thrown in. And it went the single, double, double. This time round, we're doing our single one. Which had that closing on the E of two. We're gonna add that closing on the E of two to the doubles as well. So rather than leaving them open, we're gonna go, adding that extra kick in. So this section, one and a two E and two E and a four E and one E and a two E and a three E and a. The final part of this second bar, we've got what could be called a fill, I'd call them stabs. Snare drum, floor tom, with a kick off the of two coming into it. So this whole section, Third chorus. This one changes a little bit, so we're gonna go through some of this. Now, the chorus is identical for the most part, but we've got a couple of extra fills thrown in just to build a bit of uh, anticipation for the final part of the song. Now, the calls are all the same, apart from the very first one. So the first bar of the chorus goes. Let's break that down. So, same part as usual. So the second half of that bar, three and a four, with a triplet fill thrown in. Popularized quite a bit by John Bonham. Snare, rack, four, kick. One, two, one. Okay. So it's going one and a two. your normal response. Now, on the track, this is what I'm hearing. However, when I've seen him play it live, he starts that fill with a flam. Tell it to you if you want to put that in. If I was playing it live, I probably would. On and a two and three and a four in hand. Again, really important with the hi-hat, as it's been opened, close it when you snap that snare, whether it's a flam you're playing or a single note, snap that shut. They keep everything nice and tight. And you're into your response. Second call and response, exactly the same as the first and second choruses. The third call and response, the call is identical. The third response, however, we've got a tiny little fill on the snare. So we go one and a two and three and a four and a. So that's one and a two. A little bit faster. Right? Going into the fourth part of this, 
Again, exactly the same call and response, fourth one, identical to the rest of them. Final parts of this song are divided into two halves. So we've got uh, kind of like a pre-coda and the actual coda of the song. For those of you who don't know, coda just basically means the end of the song. The first half, uh, we've got a very snare-led beat and it's on the one, two, three, four with the snare. Rather than doing a one on the kick, two on the snare, three on the kick, four on the snare, we've got quarter note snare drums all the way through. Hi-hat, washing on the ands, sorry, on the eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. And we've got offbeat sixteenths on the E's and the R's going in between. So the whole thing sounds like this. We're now going to put crash cymbals to emphasize certain parts of this beat. So for bars one and two, crash cymbal on the one. On the first bar, however, we're going to start this off with a kick, followed by that offbeat kick. Coming to beat three, we're going to put a crash cymbal on the one. And we're going to put a crash cymbal on beat four as well. This is what I can hear on the track. I have heard him play it live a few times and he doesn't seem to do this. He'll put it on beat one of bar four. So the choice is yours really. I quite like it on four. It's kind of quirky, kind of cool, a little bit different. So we'll keep it here for now. So bar three. And bar four just rides out on the hi-hats with a little change at the end of four where we're gonna hit a flam on the snare. So this will go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And we're gonna launch back into the same pattern again, but we're gonna double up the crashes. So they're gonna go on the one and the three. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And the final bar, we've got a build into the break. So we've got one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So we're going to choke that last one and we're going to build up between the kick drum, the snare drum and the hi-hat. So that bar played again. One E and a, two E. The second half of the coda begins with a two bar rest for the drums. Uh, bass player's kicking off his little riff. And it's a good one. What we've got in the third bar, 16th notes on the hi-hat. So that'll be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Followed by a build, which when I play it, I'll have a snare and a kick drum. I do a crash. And then we're gonna build up with the snare and the floor top. 16th. So those two bars are going to be 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. Now we're into the climax of the song. We've got a very syncopated rhythm going on with the drums and a load of drum fills to top them off as well. So the syncopated rhythm between the kick and the snare is this. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E. So we've got a double kick followed by a single followed by three more doubles. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. On beat four, we're going to fill that time with a fill. So, looking at the groove as a complete idea, we've got right cymbal playing eighth notes and we're crashing through this. None of the light touches here. We're full throttle. First bar, we're going to have a crash on the one. This is followed by the first fill idea, which is going to be four, E, and, da. 30 second notes on the snare with a kick drum at the end of four. Four, E, and, da. So play through. One, E, and, da. Four, E, and, da. Four, E, and, da. 
Second bar, we're going to add a crash on beat two as well. So it's going to go one, two, and two, and two, and two. Fill is going to be similar to the first one, but on the kick drum that we put under on the end of four, we're going to move the right, the right hand back to the right cymbal. So it's going to go four, and Third film. Again, we're gonna have crash them on beat two and one. So no kick drum under this one. We're gonna go four and Find the kit. Fourth time we play this, we're going to chuck some uh, some stabs on the snare and the crash. So we're going to go one, two, and a, two, and a, two, and a, four, two, and a. So that's one, two, and a, two, and a, two, and a, four, two, and a. This goes into the fifth repeat. Now the fifth repeat, we're going to go back to the very first one again. On the sixth and final repeat of this groove, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to take the first half of the bar and we're going to repeat that first half twice. So we're going to get crash cymbals on every quarter note. We're also going to end with three kick drums on those 16th notes at the very end of the bar. So we're going to get one, This is going to lead us into a build up bar, which leads us into the final part of the song. We're on the home straight now, so that's going to lead us into one, two, and a, two, and a, three, and a, four, and a. So alternating singles between the left foot, sorry, the left hand and the right foot. One, two, and a, two, and a, three, and a, four, and a. And then we're going to play one bar of the very first idea right into the right symbol. One, two, three, and a, three, and four, with a crash at the end. Breaking that last one down slightly different to the intro actually. We're going to have a crash on the one, but we're not going to put anything in between the two. So we go one, two, three, and a, And we're at the end. That's the song in its entirety. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. It's my first of hopefully a few more. If you do want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see what you get. But for now, have fun. Keep working at it. Let's play some drums.